Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This week is the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory and I invite you to come. I'm telling you, I know you've heard us say this before. One word from God can change your life forever. Be totally immersed in the Word of God all week long. Now, this week, I've invited Jeremy and Sarah Pearsons, my grandson and granddaughter, to minister to you on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Now, this young man has been in the ministry since he's three years old. I'm, I'm serious, since he's three years old, and he's never, ever done anything else in his life. He is one of the most anointed young men that I've ever known. I have learned so much from Jeremy and from Sarah and the young people that, that are in and around his ministry you're going to really enjoy today. So get your Bibles, and let's begin our Bible lesson. Hi, everybody. We're Jeremy and Sarah Pearsons, and we are so glad to be with you today as your hosts on this broadcast and all this week on the Believer's Voice of Victory. We want to say thank you to our grandparents, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, my grandparents, your <laughs> grandparents-in-law. Thank you guys so much for allowing us this opportunity to come into the homes, into the lives of your partners all over the world. We count this as such a high honor. We are so thankful. Any opportunity we get to, to open up the Word of God and spend time in the presence of God, around the things of God, with, with other believers and people of faith, I'm telling you, this is the joy of our lives. And we've got some amazing things we want to share with you today on this broadcast, all this week, even on into next week's broadcast, because the Lord is doing some very significant things in our lives right now, in our family, in our ministry. And uh, there's some things happening that we want to share with you. We want to, we want to get you in on uh, what's happening, but I believe there's some things that we can all take and learn and apply to, to our lives, wherever we are, whatever's going on in our life, because we're going to go to the Word of God this week, just like we do on this broadcast, just like you're used to. You tune into this thing. I know many people right now, you watch this broadcast every single day. You're faithful, and the Lord's done some good things for you, and we want this week to be just the same. So, Sarah, let's do this. Let's come before the Lord. Let's pray, then let's get right into the Word today. Father, we love you. We worship you. You're a good and gracious Father God to us. We come before you and your word today, and we come with eyes wide open, ears wide open, and hearts that are open to receive. We want eyes that see Jesus, ears that hear his voice, hearts that understand who we are in him and who he is in us. We thank you for the good work you've begun in us, and we say you are faithful to finish it because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, uh, like I said, there's some amazing things happening right now uh, in our lives, in our family. Uh, Sarah and I raising these two little ones together. Justice James, he's nine years old. Can you believe it? Nine years old. I can't believe it. <laughs> and little sister Jessie Grace, she's five, will be six this summer. So these kids are getting big and we're all experiencing some pretty amazing things together. The Lord's got this family on an adventure. I want to read a scripture from the book of Psalms, chapter 145. And this is going to be, I believe, our foundation text for all this week. I want to read this to you and then uh, let you in on some of the secrets, some of the good things that are happening and let the Lord talk to us today. Psalm 145 in verse four, it says, one generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Listen to it from the New Living Translation. It says, let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. So you see here in this scripture that every generation has an assignment from the Lord to tell the next generation about the good things that God has done, the good things that he is doing, and to build in them an expectation of what's to come. Mm -hmm. And if you had to put all of this in a word, and this is a word that has meant a lot to Sarah and to me and to our ministry over the years, it's the word legacy. What is a legacy? It, it's not an uncommon word. You may be familiar with it. It just, if you look it up, just simply, just simply means something that's transmitted by or received from an ancestor or a predecessor or from the past. So 
essentially, babe, it just means something that one generation gives to another one. This word has been significant to us for how many years now? 10, 11 years or more. Uh, Sarah and I were, when we got married uh, in 07, and uh, we served on staff at my parents' church here at Eagle Mountain International Church, and then for a number of years as youth ministers, and then for a time we, we traveled as representatives of Kenneth and Gloria Copeland on staff here at KCM. But almost 10 years ago, it was actually the night before Thanksgiving, 2009, Sarah and I were just laying in our bed, staring up at the ceiling one night. Lights were off. It was dark in the room, and we just started talking. We just started dreaming out loud. And I don't think we planned to have this conversation. It just happened. And I just remember at some point in the conversation, it quit being me talking to you and you talking to me, but it started being Jesus speaking to each other through each other. And some things really, some things really got planted in our hearts that night about our vision, about our future and what we could see. And we started dreaming out loud about having our own. And, and I don't know what you specifically remember from that night, but I just remember thinking like, am I allowed to think these thoughts? <laughs> because we'd been on staff here uh, and, and just like everybody else in my family, we were serving the vision of this ministry. And as far as I knew, that's what we were going to be doing. <laughs> but seemingly out of nowhere, the Lord starts dealing with us and talking to us about having our own and, and vision for the future. What do you remember specifically about that. I remember not very long before that, the Lord speaking to me in our bedroom and said so clearly to me, you need to be ready to stand on your own. Mm. And for me, I think I didn't realize it at the time, but now I see it, that it's so important that there came a time in our life where we had our own thing with God. Yeah. And we could say, God did this for me. Um, no other man did this for me. God did this for me. Yeah. And um, um, yeah, I just believe we were supposed to be able to stand our own. And there comes, there comes a point that, well, we always say this, but you've got to get your own God. Yeah. And um, we've seen amazing things. God has done awesome things with our parents and our grandparents, both your side and my side. Yeah. And I can go back and recall just memory after memory after memory of amazing testimonies that God's done in my family. But there did come a point in our lives where we had to start standing and believing to see God's goodness show up in our family. And we had to know how to trust Him and believe God for ourselves. And yeah. I think we were at that point where He was beginning to deal with us. I want you to step out. And the scripture that always comes to me is um, Genesis chapter 12. I think I wrote it right in here. And it's, um, it's so good. In the Amplified it says, now the Lord said to Abram, go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you abundantly and make your name great, exalted and distinguished. And you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others. And I will bless and do good for and benefit those who bless you and I'll curse that is subject to my wrath and judgment, the one who curses, despises, dishonors and has contempt for you. And in you, all the families or the nations of the earth will be blessed. Mm. And I think it was time for the Lord to use our family yeah. to be a blessing and to bless humanity. So, And it was a new thought. I know it was to me anyway at that time to think, you know, could we could we step away from the only thing we'd ever known? And I, I look back on it now and it seems so clear, but you know, in the middle of something like that, uh, there was uncertainty about the future. And a lot of people live with that kind of uncertainty about the future. And it's the fear of the unknown that keeps people locked in one place. Mm. Fear's a prison. You hear me? Fear is a prison. It's not a feeling, it's a spirit. And it's a prison. The scripture talks about people who were all their lifetimes uh, living in bondage mm -hmm. because of the fear of death. That's a prison. Yeah. Well, what is a prison? It's, it's a, 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 an area with walls that limit how far somebody mm -hmm. can go. If somebody is confined to a prison, then that means you are only allowed 
to be this far away. You cannot go any further than this. And that's what fear is. That's what fear does in the lives of people. It locks them in a prison. And so many people are locked in that prison and are uh, unable, it seems, to step out of it and into the future that God's called them into because they're frozen right there in their tracks for one reason, the uncertainty of what's out in front of them. Yeah. But this is where the life of faith comes in. Mm -hmm. Living by faith doesn't, doesn't allow you to <laughs> mysteriously or magically time travel into the future and, oh, okay, now I can see everything's going to work out and it's just going to be like that and <laughs> this is going to happen then and this is going to happen this way. And then you come back to the present and say, well, I can do this, no problem. But what living by faith does allow you to do that nobody else can do is frame the future with your words and begin to see your future the way God sees it. And that's what was happening that night. We were beginning to see for our lives what he saw for our lives and the good things. And even though it seemed big at the time, it seemed expansive, it seemed expensive. And laying there in the bed of that little house that night, I don't think we could have imagined a way to, to naturally do it or to pay for it or to make it happen. But we chose that night instead of running from it in fear to run to it in faith. And we spent the next several months seeking the Lord about if this was him and finding out if this was the plan. But we went and sat down with my grandparents in their home and said, we submit this to you, but this is what we believe God is saying to us. Um, it's time for us to step into our own ministry. And we told them we, don't, we just want to change the dynamic of the relationship. We want to go from your employees to your partners in this ministry. And we were no less committed to the vision of this place. But what we felt like we had to do was change our dependency. Mm -hmm. And it really goes back to what Sarah was saying and reading there out of the book of Genesis concerning the life of Abraham. Get out of your father's house, not because there's automatically necessarily something wrong with father's house. It's because as long as you're in the house, there is a certain level of dependency there. Mm -hmm. And for us, we had to change that. It's the same thing when the, that uh, the scripture said, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. In other words, the two of you now in covenant, you and I can no longer be dependent on this house to meet our own needs. It's you and I going before the Lord. So anyway, I'm <laughs> getting going on a lot of God tracks here. God is going to be, and I'm choosing that he is going to be my source right. for everything in this life. Yeah. My source for a love, my source for um, uh, my family in every way, my finances, my source for everything. Yeah. I'm making him my, sing he's, I'm depending on him for yeah. everything. I'm not looking to any man. I'm not doing it one way just because I've always done it one way. I'm looking to God and there's no, there's no greater thrill. And how many times has God asked us to do that in our life sure. where we've had to step out, where we didn't know where we were going yeah. and depend fully on him. And, and it enables you, instead of other people having to bless you all the time, yeah. it enables you to become a greater blessing to other people. Absolutely. And I hope you heard what she said just a moment ago. She said, there comes a time in your life where you've got to get your own God. I hope you hear that. That is so powerful. That has to happen in the life of every person. And, and, and believe me, it is a benefit. It is a blessing to grow up in a house of faith, in the house of faith. And there's nothing in this world that I would trade for that. I am so thankful to have been born into this house, to have been raised in this house. But there had to come a time in my life the same way it had to come in yours. We had to get our own God. In other words, it can't just be Papa's God, Mimi's God, mom or dad's God. He had to be our God. Mm -hmm. That's why the psalmist David said, oh God, you are my God. That moment has got to come in the life of every believer. Get your own God. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, but he's also the God of Jeremy. Mm -hmm. He's the God of Sarah. He's the God of the Pearson's yes. household. Yeah. We had to get our own God. And that whether we realized it or not, is what was happening uh, almost 10 years ago now. So we submitted this uh, 
this thought, this leading that we had to Mimi and Papa and said, believe the Lord's calling us into our own ministry. They prayed over it with us. They said, this is good. This is God. They helped launch us out, launch us out in September of 2010. We stepped into our own Pearson's Ministries International. And I'm telling you, since that time, we have not gone backwards, uh -uh. not in one thing. It was just one level of increase to another from glory to glory to glory. And it's been a marvelous adventure of faith. And I, I have no regrets about taking that step. I, I don't know how long ago it was. I think probably that night, the seeds of something got planted in us that even now are still just beginning to sprout up. And one of the things we laid there that night thinking about and talking about was having a church. It was not just having a ministry where we traveled, which is what we've been doing now for, well, since the time we got married, but in our own ministry for nine, almost 10 years. We talked about having a church. We talked about having a, a place with our own family and staff and partners. Uh, and, and we saw ourselves not necessarily here in Fort Worth, Texas, even though that's where I was born and raised. Uh, we saw ourselves out in the mountains and the Lord was just painting a beautiful picture on our hearts. And I could take time and give you lots of details to the story, but here's the bottom line. It's happening. Right now, it's happening. As a matter of fact, as Sarah and I sit here recording these broadcasts for you, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. We have got a piece of property. It's under contract. And by the time you see this, we will have closed and uh, the, the remodeling will have begun on a beautiful piece of property just outside Colorado Springs, Colorado, uh, in the mountains. And it is a picture of the vision that the Lord gave us nine, 10 years ago. And one of the reasons I bring all this up in light of this scripture we're looking at today, in the light of the concept and, and the idea of legacy is because that's the heart of this church. It's Legacy Church. That's what we're calling it. Legacy Church, raising a family in the house of faith. That's what the assignment is on this church. That's what the assignment is on our lives. Now, go back to this scripture. Look at it again. Psalm 145, verse 4. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. One of the reasons, and perhaps maybe, maybe the only reason, Sarah and I could step up to this crossroads in our life and have the courage that it's requiring right now to take this step, leave everything we've ever known, move our family, move our ministry and start this new outreach of ministry. I believe one of the main reasons, one of the main sources we draw that courage from is because the generations before us have fulfilled this scripture. And you and I both have grown up in homes that sat us down and those generations, our Mimi's and our Papa's, our moms <laughs> and our dads, we're faithful to praise God's works to us and to declare His mighty acts. And sir, there's nothing, nothing that I would give in exchange for that, having been brought up in a home that magnified the goodness, the greatness, and the faithfulness of God. Mm -hmm. And I think back on now for me, almost 40 years of of being in that environment, stepping up to a change like this. There are folks that we've talked to about this move that have been real excited with this. There are others we've talked to and been like, how can you do that? How can you just move like that? It's faith. It's faith. We're always up for a good adventure. Right? And that's yeah. what faith is. It is a good adventure. It's one good adventure right after the other. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for the legacy of faith that you and I have been brought up in. Mm -hmm. And I want to read this quote. I saw this not long ago, and this is from Brother Billy Graham. And he said, the greatest legacy one can pass on to one's children and grandchildren is a legacy of character and faith. Let me read it to you again. The greatest legacy one can pass on to one's children and grandchildren is a legacy of character and faith. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been given. Now, you know this and I know this. I'll speak for my grandparents. You speak for yours. My grandparents have 
done more for us and our family, including my mom and dad, my sisters, my cousins, my, my sister, her husband, my cousins, different ones. I mean, you could line up every member of the Pearson's Copeland family <laughs> and go one right to the other. Has Mimi and Papa blessed you? Have Mimi and Papa blessed you? And the answer is a resounding yes. yes. And what they've done for us, besides the fact just being great grandparents, they have blessed us in every imaginable, in, imaginable way, monetarily, um, materially. I mean, you, you, you think about it, uh, just provided in so many ways. But the greatest thing that they have given to us is not a dollar amount. It's not a physical or material blessing of any kind. It's the spirit of faith. Yeah. It's the spirit of faith. Mm -hmm. And if somebody were to make me choose, and you can't, but if you had to make me choose and they said, you want your, you want your papa's money or his faith, I'd take his faith mm -hmm. every single day. Amen. Now that, that is what I believe that we've grown up in. And the same, I'd say the same thing about my own mom and dad. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it was the house of faith, man. Growing up in that house, it was faith in the morning, faith at noontime, faith when the sun went down. And my mom and dad have done so much to provide for me and my sister. And even now that you and I are married, they have blessed us over and over and over again. But at the end of the day, the thing I so value and appreciate more than anything is the spirit of faith. Mm -hmm. I know you feel the same way about your own parents and grandparents. It's just, I can't get over the scripture when you're talking about it in 2 Timothy um, 1, 5, when it says, I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, mm -hmm. Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that it is in you also. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for my grandparents and my parents. I mean, it was, there was never a, a day that didn't go by that God wasn't present in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we were, we grew up in church. We were always in church hearing the word of God. And we were talking about the Lord, our conversation around the dinner table. It, it wasn't just work for us. Yeah. It was, um, maybe though my parents were in ministry, it was, I knew through their conversation how much they loved God. And if there's one thing I want to leave for my kids, it's not just that they see us preaching all the time. It's not just that they see us ministering or thank God we're following God and doing his will for our life. But I also want them to know how much I love him. Yeah. And I want them to hear it out of our mouths at the dinner table. I want them to hear, hey, let me tell you what God did for me and daddy even before you were born. Let me tell you about when you were, when I was pregnant with you and God did yeah. a miracle in my body. Let me tell you what God has done. Yeah. So. Thank you, I think Lord. just sitting around and talking about it yeah. and telling. And that's the fulfillment of this scripture. One generation, every generation has this as an assignment from the Father God to tell the next one how good he is, how good he's been and how good he will always Amen. be. We have just a few seconds left. <laughs> and I want to say this is where we're headed in these broadcasts this week. We're going to talk about living a legacy. And this is the statement the Lord gave me. The legacy that you leave is the life that you live. I'll say it to you like this, the life you live is the legacy you'll leave. We're gonna talk about that on this broadcast all this week. We're out of time right now. Don't go anywhere. Sarah and I will be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.